Come on, Sister Mary. Praise God, church. Happy Resurrection Day. And somebody should shout and says, he has risen. Amen. Just imagine if somebody tell you that somebody is going to rise from the dead, but God had, has risen and we need to shout hallelujah and thank him for rising, rising this day. I give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the pastor and to all the officers and members, visitors, friends and guests. We want to thank God for his grace. And we want to thank him for his mercy, for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see a sunny day. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, church, where would we be? So we need to shout and thank him for his grace and his mercy. And at this time, we're going to ask Sister Sonia to come back with another selection as we give honor to all the praises and to Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, that caught me a little off guard. Praise the Lord. I was rocking and rolling with the... <laughs> Yeah, I, I was just waiting for some more. Amen. 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 We're going to go on with our service and our call to worship is Pastor Ruffin. Amen. So I will lead in the call to worship and mother, mother, Sister Mary is going to be the voice of all of you all, but I want you all to be responsive in uh as, as i uh, lead the call to worship amen and, and the word says or the worship says the call to worship says i was glad when they said unto me hallelujah let us go into the house of the lord our feet have been standing within your gates O jerusalem 
for a day in your courts is it better than a thousand elsewhere? I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in tents of wickedness. Oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth, let me say it one more time. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. My Jesus, oh sing to the Lord a new song. Mm -hmm. For he has done marvelous things. For he has done marvelous things. I will sing of loyalty and of justice to you. Oh Lord, I will sing. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And we're going to um, have another selection. Amen. Amen. Sister Sonia. Oh, thank you, Jesus. His son. Oh, yeah. They call him Jesus. Ah, yes, he came to love. Mm -hmm. Heal and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty cry. You thought I was for a So you can 
it's all worth it. It's all worth it because he lives. It's all worth it. Yes, it is. It's all worth oh, because he lives. Because he lives. Oh, bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. At this time, we're going to ask Sister Keisha as she will bring us our prayer this morning. Amen. So let me step in. I, I may have, I thought I changed that. Mother Burger, are you on? Can you unmute Mother Burger? I changed that. Let me see what I had in there. I didn't put it in. I think I resent it on the text, right? Yeah, okay. So Sister Keisha has had some surgery, some dental surgery, and she's not able to come on. She's here with us, but she's not going to be doing a lot of talking. She had her wisdom teeth removed. Amen. Amen. Anybody Amen. ever had that wisdom teeth removed? Yes. So you don't want to do a lot of talking. So let's just have, lift up a word of prayer right now in the name of Jesus for this service. Uh, and, and instead of trying to get Mother Berger on, because uh, she had asked she had asked a volunteer. What, what were you saying, Sister Mary? I'll just go ahead on and lift you up in the name of Jesus Thank Christ. You. Thank you, Father Sister. God, we come to you today with thanksgiving in our hearts, Father. We pray that you will come into the midst of this service. And then we pray for each and every family that's online today, Father. We pray that you will lift our pastor up in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Bless him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Father. And we just want to thank you, Father, for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for uh, for rising today, Lord. We thank you for this resurrection day, Lord. And we just ask you to, I'm praying for healing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I ask you to go into the hospitals and, and into the nursing home. And, and just for the ones that don't know how to ask you for prayer, Lord, I'm just, I just want you to just lift everybody up today, Father, in the name of Jesus of Christ, Father. I pray for all our military families, Lord. And we just want to thank you, God, because you said, whatever we ask in your name. And I'm asking these blessings in the name of Jesus the Christ, Father, because you say you will never leave us nor forsaken us, that you will be with us always, even until the end of the age. And Father, we know if you said it, your word is true. And I just want to thank you today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your blessings, Lord. Thank you because you say you will never leave us. Mm -hmm. And I'm just asking that blessings in Jesus' name, all these blessings I'm asking in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray that Sister Keisha, we pray for healing for her mouth, Lord. And we just want to just give you all the honor and praises because we know it's already done. In the name of Jesus, I'm asking all these blessings in your name. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Sister. Amen. And we're going to ask our very own Sister Betty as she would come on with our welcoming announcements. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, Sister Betty. Good morning. Oh, thank God for a resurrection Sunday. We thank God for being with us. And we welcome you all to today's service, to live in a water that reminds us that Christ lives so we can all face tomorrow. Amen. Well, we serve a living God. So you all welcome to serve a living God. Amen. On that note, let's have the following announcements. These are announcements for this morning. Do you want to be empowered? Then join us this Wednesday at 1 p.m. for midweek prayer. All are invited to join it at 605-472-5571. And please utilize the access code number 422-239 and the pound sign to join us in prayer. Also, don't forget to join us for Faithful Friday Bible Study this week at 7 p.m. as we continue our study of the Gospel of Mark. Join us for dinner and fellowship on April 15th at 3 p.m. at the Great American Buffet in Fredericksburg. 
Virginia at Central Park as we present the new member certificates. And please RSVP with Sister Mary or Sister Sonia, not later than April 13th, so that we can we will all have a solid count for the 15th. Also, please join us at 10 a.m. Sunday mornings for chess school. Make our experience even more rich with your presence. And we have excellent teachings and group participation. And join us and receive a blessing. And for our April birthdays, we have Sister Moesha Phillips, which was on April 6th. And for our anniversaries, Living Water AME Church, it's April 25th. Thank you all for joining service today and have a blessed day. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you so much, Sister Betty, for those announcements. And we ask everyone to govern, govern itself accordingly. And at this time, we're going to bring our very own pastor on for our appeal um, for giving and so hey. Pastor Ruck. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Mary. Thank you so much, Sister Betty and Sister Sonia and all who have participated in the service thus far. I want to apologize to our very own Sister Jessica because she was about, I had switched it in the text. If you if you received the text, I had reassigned because Sister Keisha did text us and let us know that she was she had had surgery on her wisdom teeth and that I it replaced her with Sister Jessica and failed to call her name, but we will be calling her name next week. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen again. And then I want to add one announcement before we do our offer tour. I want to make it clear that our 2023 Reverend Dr. James E. Harrell scholarship is now available to the public at our website, at, and that's http s colon forward slash forward slash livingwaterame.org. And you can find that under the grow tab, under the grow tab. So if you go to our website, go to the grow tab, and you'll see that the scholarship is available. All you have to do is click on the uh, link or, or the uh, graphic there, and it will open the scholarship for you, for those who would like to, to apply. The deadline is July 31st. 2023, all of the guidelines and instructions for those who can apply and will apply are available online at our website. Thank God, thank God, thank God that we were able to get that done. Amen, amen, amen. Looking forward to receiving some scholarship applications and uh, and, and, and having it go through our scholarship committee. Amen, amen, and amen again. Well, it is offering time. It is time to give here on Resurrection Sunday. Holly, Amen. Somebody ought to shout for the opportunity to give. Hallelujah. Sunday. God has given his very best to us in his only begotten son. Amen. Give us life and health and strength, eternal life, life more abundantly. Oh, what more can I say? You ought to be glad to give on this Resurrection Sunday. And it is a blessing to be able to give. Let me say that again. It is a blessing to be able to give, whether you're giving a tithe or whether you're giving an offering, you ought to give God blessings right now in the name of Jesus. Give cheerfully is what the God, God asks us to do. The Bible says to give cheerfully or give with love, give with a glad heart. And you ought to have a glad heart on this Resurrection Sunday. Look what the Lord has done for you and I. Amen. Oh, you Amen. ought to, be able to give with Amen. a glad heart. You ought to be able to give cheerfully this Sunday. And you can give one of four ways. You can give via Cash App. You can give via Givelify. You can give via PayPal. Or you can give by the United States Postal Service. You see all of the e-handles on the screen. You see the mailing address on the screen. You can also click on that QR code and it will take you to our giving tab and it will instruct you on in how to give. We thank God for the opportunity to give. Amen. We thank God for the opportunity to give. Mama. Let us pray. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for what you've done and allowing us the opportunity to give back unto your church, God. We thank you, God, that there will be resources in your house. Meet, as your word says in Malachi, so that all will be able to eat. All will be able to have what they stand in need of. God, your church is the center of our community. Help us to give unto your church, God, gladly. Help us to give cheerfully. Help us to give our very best, God, just as you gave us your very best. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for giving us 
blessing upon blessing upon blessing, God. Shake down, running together and running over, God. We thank you, God, for this offering and this tithe, God, that's being collected here on this day, on this Resurrection Sunday. We ask that you would bless it, God. Multiply it 30, 60, 100 fold, God, that we might be a blessing to the greater staff of community and yay, even the world. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Lord. Here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen again. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank, thank you, Pastor. So Sister Jessica is going to come on with our scriptures. Yes. <laughs> and it's in Matthews 28, 1 through 10. Amen. Amen. Sister Jessica. Good morning, church. Good morning. Many blessings to all of you guys on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. I will be coming from Matthews 28, verses 1 through 10. Yes. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified, he isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. And no, go quickly and tell his, his disciples that he was risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I've told you. The woman ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings and the hearings of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Jessica. Bless you. Yeah, amen. Thank amen. you. Thank you. And at this time, we're going to have a Simonic selection by Sister Sonia. Amen. There is nothing like the amazing grace of God. If it had not been for the grace of God, we would not be here. Lord, we're grateful for the grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I'm see twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears really how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are Oh, 
The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Amazing I, grace. Yes, I just want to um, thank uh, Brother Claire, Terrence for being on the service with us this morning. Amen. And Sister Amen. Deborah Rivers. Sister Amen. Deborah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen again. We thank God for that sermonic selection. Amen. Uh, amazing grace. Uh, many of you may not know, but it was uh, John, uh, John Newton who was, who became an uh, evan uh, uh, evangelical cleric and slave abolitionist. Uh, he, he was a former slave uh, ship captain. And he heard the slaves in the bowels of the ship uh, praising in, in the midst of their middle passage. And it changed his life. I, I said it changed his life. It changed him from being a slave ship captain. And John Newton, who was formerly a slave himself, he had been enslaved for a time in West Africa. And he knew what enslavement was. And he knew, having personally experienced what it was, and because he had personally experienced it and heard the slaves in the bowels of the ship, it changed him forever. I said it changed him forever. So I thank God for that sermonic selection. I thank God for you joining us this Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God praise. This Resurrection Sunday where we worship God in spirit and in truth, where we know that the foundations that, that of our faith are laid through the resurrection of Christ. It, it lets us know that we serve a living God. <laughs> our God is not dead, but our God is yet alive and keeping us, keeping us, keeping us each and every day. We are thankful for 
that song, the Samanus election. We are thankful for this Resurrection Sunday. Somebody ought to just give God praise. You ought to give him praise as I pray to him. God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to share in your word, to preach what thus saith the Lord one more time. God, we thank you for on this Resurrection Sunday, the opportunity to share in the joy of resurrection, God. Share in the joy of the living God. Share in the knowledge and understanding that the cornerstone that the builders rejected became the cornerstone of our faith. God, we thank you, God, for this Resurrection Sunday. We thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you, God, for all those who have gathered to hear a word from you, God. Now, hide me behind your cross. Speak to me and through me, God, that your people might be blessed. Speak, Lord, so that we might know what you're saying to us in this day, in this hour, in this time. God, speak as only you can. God, give me clarity of thought and articulation of speech as you speak. Speak, God, in the name of Jesus. Speak, God, so someone's life might be transformed. Someone might be saved. Someone might be healed. Someone might be delivered in the name of Jesus, God. Someone might join your church. Someone might become a part of the community of believers this day. Someone might be converted, God, in the name of Jesus, to know that you are the living God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, when it's all said and done. We're going to give you honor. We're going to give you praise, God. We know, God, that you do the preaching. We know, God, that you do the teaching. We know, God, that you share your word with us. So thank you, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen again. What a wonderful time to be found in God's house one more time to preach what thus said the Lord, to hear what the Lord is saying to us on this Resurrection Sunday. Let me just read back a few words of the text that Sister Jessica so eloquently uh, shared with us, uh, our sermonic text today. And I thank her for being patient. I thank you all for being patient with me. I got it all twisted up. We just thank God that now my, my eyes are clear, my head is straight, because God is going to do the speaking. Y'all pray for your pastor, because I, I, I looked at the text all kinds of wrong. The, the Bible says in Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew 28, and if you're able to stand, I'm just going to give you a few pieces of it. But if you're able to stand, I want you to stand in reverence to God's word, especially the Gospel. And it says here in the very first verse of Matthew, Matthew 28, early on Sunday morning. I said early on Sunday morning as the new day was dawning. Mary Magdalene, you know Mary Magdalene, the one who, who Jesus uh, uh, exercised. She had seven demons and Jesus exercised. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, uh, that's Mary, the mother of James, went, went out to the tomb, to went out to visit the tomb. And, and, and the Bible says in verse 2 that suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, similar to the one that, that, that shook the earth when Jesus died. And, and, and then it goes on to say, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. <laughs> Dropping down to verse 5, it says, then the angel spoke to the women. So, so he spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I, I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. In, in verse 6, it says, he isn't here. Somebody say it with me. He isn't here. He, he is risen from the dead just as he said would happen. Come, come see. Come, come see. Come, come, come see where, where his body was lying. And, and, and then dropping down to verse 9, it says, and they went and Jesus met them and, and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet and worshiped him and worshiped him and then this the the a part of verse 10 it says jesus then jesus said to them don't be afraid <laughs> don't be afraid don't be afraid y'all don't be afraid it's resurrection sunday don't don't be afraid jesus is risen don't 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 be afraid he is risen Glory to God in the highest that Jesus has risen. The kingdom of God has come upon the earth. The kingdom of God has come in the earth. The kingdom of God has come 
above the earth, what was planted in the ground uh, in, in Jesus, what was planted in the ground as our Passover sacrifices has, has risen as a seed. And that's why Jesus talked about the seed in the parables. He is the seed. And he's planted in the ground and it, and it has risen on the Sunday morning. We, we, we celebrate that Jesus is risen. And we, we know that Jesus gave his body and his blood as our Passover sacrifice, so, uh, as our Passover sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God that redeems us. He's the Lamb of God that redeems us. He's the Lamb of God that saves us. He, he's the perfect sacrifice. What was given in love as a sacrifice has risen, and God has redeemed and restored us through his righteousness. God's victorious plan has come to pass it, it has come to pass it, it's been executed and, and his righteousness god's victorious righteousness and his plan has been executed and god's love has redeemed us for jesus is risen our faith has been made secure our faith has been made whole our faith has been made complete in jesus he's it's been made complete and because jesus has come from heaven to earth and from earth to the grave and from the grave to the sky uh, our faith is made complete and, and 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 we believe god for our very best we believe god for our very best because god has redeemed us we we believe god for our very best because god sent his very best he he sent his only begotten son and today i want you to know and I want you to, to know, as I preach from this sermon topic and subject, we believe. I, I want you to know that there's nothing that's going to stop us from believing. That I want you to know that there's nothing that's going to hinder us from seeing the blessings of God. I want you to know that there's nothing that's going to hinder you or I from, from, from knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, from, from being a part of the kingdom of God and, and, and from reveling as a part of God's family. Uh, we're sons and daughters grafted into to the, to the family of God. We, the Bible says that we're, we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that nothing's going to block you. Uh, uh, somebody said, I heard it in, in one of the songs, it may have been a rap song, that nothing is going to block you. Nothing's going to block me. We're going to be all the way up. I'm, I'm all the way up. I'm all the way up because Jesus is up. Because Jesus got up. I'm, I'm all the way up. I, I'm all the way up. We believe. We believe. We believe. Say it with me. We believe. We believe. We believe. Say it one more time from your chest. We believe. That's the sermon title and, 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 and subject. We, we believe. We believe. And today, we believe. We believe. And, and, and God changed this up because I preached it earlier. And, and it was I believe. And, and now God has changed it to, to we believe. And I thank God for changing it. And we believe. We believe. We believe. God, thank you for, for, for allowing us to believe. Thank you, God, for giving us reassurance to believe. Thank you, God, for uh, 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 getting your son up from the grave and overcoming our fear and overcoming death and overcoming sin and overcoming the grave so that we might be able to believe, so that we might believe we might believe we've arrived at this critical juncture here on this resurrection sunday and, and we believe it and if we were in a study in a faith study uh for our undergrad degree this would be our capstone course this would be our capstone test this would be our finals exam and, and the resurrection rep represents the final exam if we were uh working on our uh, master's degree and and we were um uh we had to do our um uh, or our doctorate had to do our dissertation, uh, then then we would have to uh, defend our faith. And the Resurrection Sunday uh, uh, represents the defense of our faith. It's like having defending your dissertation or or or, or any any test, any final test. It's the capstone course. It's the it's the capstone course. I, I said it's the capstone course. And and God, we we know that this resurrection, that Jesus's resurrection represents the fulfillment of God's salvific plan for the world not just for you and i it's for the world and, and all we have to do is believe that i said we believe today and because we believe we're, we're saved we're saved and we believe in the living god and jesus's resurrection is the basis of our christian faith it's the basis of our christian faith yes it is it's, it's the basis of our christian faith and if ever there was a time that we need to believe uh it's today if ever there was a time in history, just as it was 
2,000 plus years ago, today represents a time in our world where we need to believe. We, we believe, we believe. We need to believe in the living God. If, if you just think about what has happened in our country since last week, um, just, just think about what has happened as democracy has been put on trial. Uh, democracy has been put on trial in the state of Tennessee. I, I tell you, it's been on trip. It's been put on trial. We we need to be aware of what's going on in our context in our world as we see democracy has been put on trial in, in the state of Tennessee. And it reminds us that in spite of our challenges, in spite of the challenges we face as a people, that we must believe God even even when it seems like we may have lost the battle, even though it seems like uh, democracy may be dead. Even though we've been struggling for years and years and years, for, for, for hundreds of years, from slavery to, to black clothes and from black clothes to Jim Crow, and, uh, Jim and Jane Crow, and from Jim and Jane Crow to our current state of oppression where democracy is on trial. I said democracy is on trial. We saw, we saw three democratically elected state representatives uh, from the Democratic Party in Tennessee face expulsion from office this week for violating so-called house rules of the quorum. <laughs> they violated these house rules of a quorum, the quorum. Uh, Justin Jones of Nashville and uh, Justine Pearson of Memphis and Gloria Johnson of Knoxville, they were, they were put on trial within the state house for, for violating these so-called the house decorum rules. And never mind that it had been a 157 years since anyone had been expelled from the Tennessee legislature. Never mind that their offensive were the, of those who were expelled were more grievous than those protesting from the pit. That's what what with the with Brother Pearson and and, and, and Sister Johnson and and and, and brother uh, uh, brother and Joes were doing. They were protesting with from the pit. They they were speaking out. Uh, they were speaking out, uh, and, and we know that Jones and Pearson, the two black state representatives, were expelled. While Johnson, who was white, survived by one vote, she survived by one vote, and not my words, but hers. She said the only reason she believed she survived uh, and wasn't expelled was because of the color of her skin. N not my words, but her words. And they were all standing up for the people and calling for tighter state gun laws after the the, the, in, the, the ruthless slaying of three children and three adults in, 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 in Tennessee in, in a school there, in a Christian school there, where these, these children were gunned down by this, this woman who had formerly gone to the school and, and had been depressed. And so she decided to kill three children, three nine-year-olds and, and three adult children. And so the, these legislators were in the bull pit or in the pit of the, of the legislature Calling out for gun rights, calling out for gun rights. They, 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 like Jesus. These, 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 these states representatives were calling out for fairness. They were, they were doing what their constituents elected them to do, which was to be a voice for them in in the state legislature. L let's listen to a snippet of what Justin Pearson, uh, her, her, her defense as, of his actions as he faced his, his expulsion. I'm gonna share a clip for you right now. And we're going to take a look at that as we see how he was uh, persecuted by the state legislator. Let me share that with you now. Amen, somebody. And you all let me know. Preferably you can see this. And I'm going to expand it and we're going to play it. Let's listen. God, who makes all things possible who takes the son of teenage parents, Kimberly Owens Pearson and Jason C. Pearson, and brings him to an institution built by enslaved people's hand, all glory and honor to God, who brings those who've been marginalized and excluded into this place and tells them that you still have a voice, that you still are somebody, and that the movement for love and justice cannot be stopped because we've still got a heartbeat, because we've still got a movement for love that needs us. We've still got people who are calling on us to act and to do something to all you who still believe that the best days for democracy are ahead. For all of you who still believe that our better days in Tennessee are ahead, I want to tell you that I still believe with you. And how, how is it that even now with this persecution on this holy week, 
after my own brother, Justin Jones, Representative Jones, gets expelled from the House, is it that we still have hope and faith and belief in the democracy of Tennessee, faith and hope and the belief in the democracy of the United States of America? How is it that you still have hope, you descendant of enslaved people? How is it that you still have hope? Well, it's because even from the bottom of slave ships, my people didn't quit. Even in cotton fields and rice fields, my people didn't quit. Even when they were whipped and chained and told they had no name, my people didn't quit. Even when they incarcerated us, locked us up for a crack cocaine epidemic created by President Ronald Reagan to go to war in South America, my people didn't quit. Even when they defunded our schools, separated us and called us colored and white, even when they put us on lynching trees in the state of Tennessee, specifically in Shelby County. My people didn't quit. Even now, as our own brothers and sisters lay to rest because of the failure of people in positions of power to do something. Because people are refusing to pass just laws to end the epidemic of gun violence in the state of Tennessee my people have yet to quit. And so even now, amidst this boot, amidst this persecution, I remember the good news. Hallelujah, Jesus. I remember that on Friday, the government decided that my savior, Jesus, a man that was innocent of all crimes except fighting for the poor, fighting for the marginalized, fighting for the LGBTQ community, fighting for those who are single mothers, fighting for those who are ostracized, fighting for those pushed to the periphery. My, my savior, my black Jesus, he was lynched by the government on Friday. And they thought that all hope had been lost. All the, 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 the outside, it rained and it thundered and, and everybody said everything was over and it was some black women who stood at the cross. It was some black women who watched what the government did to that boy named Jesus. They were witnesses as you have been witnesses to what is happening in the anti-democratic state of Tennessee. They were witnesses to what was going on and I got to tell you, it got quiet on Saturday. Yes, I tell you, it was a sad day on Saturday. All hope seemed to be lost. Representatives were thrown out of the state house. Democracy seemed to be at its end. Seemed like the NRA and gun lobbyists might win. But oh, that was good news for us. I don't know how long this Saturday in the state of Tennessee might last. But oh, we have good news, folks. We've got good news that Sunday always comes. Resurrection is a promise, and it is a prophecy. It's a prophecy that came out of the cotton fields. It's a prophecy that came out of the lynching tree. It's a prophecy that still lives in each and every one of us in order to make the state of Tennessee the place that it ought to be. And so I've still got hope because I know we are still here, and we will never quit. I just wanted to share that with you as Representative Pearson, 29 years old, the gospel has been preached. <laughs> I say the gospel has been preached from the bullpit or the pit of the state house in Tennessee. This young brother, this young representative, Representative Pearson and, and, and Representative, uh, all of them had a chance to speak and both, uh, both of the two brothers who were expelled, Representative Pearson in particular, uh, spoke eloquently about how he compared to what was going on today in the state of Tennessee with what was going on some 2,000 years ago when Jesus was persecuted, when Jesus was expelled from the Jewish church, when Jesus was was scourged all night long, beaten and whipped and for you and I, and when he was hung upon that tree for you and I. Uh, and, and what Justin uh, Pearson said was, we can't quit. We, we can't quit now. I want you to know that we can't quit, that there are going to be some stones 
in our lives. And there are going to be some stones like the one that the women who went to the tomb to, to visit Jesus. They went to they went to the tomb looking for Jesus' body to 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 embalm it with the with the with the spices and and they went there and, and they they didn't see him. They went there. Jesus was persecuted. I tell you, he was persecuted just like these brothers have been persecuted and just like you and I will be persecuted. That they they're standing up for for people's rights. I said they they're standing up for gun laws and and so our text today finds that a very in, in the gospel of Matthew shows us today that God has fulfilled and continues to fulfill the promise of salvation. If you heard Representative Pearson, he said Sundays always come. Resurrection is a promise. I want you to know today. I don't care what you're going through. I want you to know today the resurrection is a promise. I, I know some of us are dealing with death. Uh, but resurrection is a promise. I know some of us are dealing with surgery and having to recover. Uh, resurrection is a promise. I know some of us are dealing with ailing parents. I want you to know that resurrection is a promise that you're going to get up. That these are but stones in your life. And, and, and the Bible is clear. The Bible is clear. Uh, uh, I, I know some of us are dealing with, especially the Redfern family, as Brother Jeffrey went home to be with the Lord. I want you to know that this is but a stone in your life. It, it may seem like a large stone. It may seem like a heavy stone. It may seem like an insurmountable stone. But I want you to know that these stones will be rolled away. The Bible is clear. I want to. I want to pray for the entire Living Water Andy Church family, for for their for all of your friends and all of your associates and and, and all of your coworkers and all of your neighbors neighbors i want you to carry this message forward that we believe in we ain't gonna quit because we know that resurrection always comes and we know that god will roll away the stones in our lives we know that through sickness we believe we know that uh, uh, when our money is funny and our change is strange we know that we we believe we ain't gonna quit nothing can stop us from trusting and believing in god's saving grace so we ain't gonna quit and through every trial and every test we believe, we believe, we believe through sickness, we believe, even in death, we believe, we believe that there will be some stones from time to time that might challenge us, that, that might appear to block us, that might appear to be insurmountable, but we believe, we believe, I said we believe, we, we won't quit, there might be some, the, the stone of, of sin from time to time, and, but, but we won't quit, there'll be the stone of doubt from time to time, but we won't quit. Uh, there'll be the stone of our fear, our own personal fears, but we won't quit. The stone of the world around us impacting our personal lives and our outlook. The stone of personal tragedy, but we won't quit. The stone of death of a loved one, but we won't quit. The stone of loneliness from time to time, but we won't quit. The stone of institutional injustice as we witnessed in, Tennessee, in the Tennessee State House this past week as democracy was laid aside for some rules of the quorum. Uh, I want you to know that that's not new. Don't you know that Jesus was murdered because of the state house rules of Judaism, that he, he violated the state house rules of Judaism and called them whitewashed tombs to their face, told them liars is what he said. He, he said, you say one thing, but you live another. I want you to know that we can't quit. Don't you know that Jesus has to had to face some state house rules and that he was persecuted on our behalf because he, he, he violated the rules. He violated the rules of Judaism. I just stopped by to tell you today and I just stopped by to let somebody know that there will be some stones in our way from time to time, but that God will remove these stones for our benefit. As we examine the text today, we see, we see that God will remove the stone. We see that the stone, the stone didn't stop Jesus from resurrecting. The stone didn't stop Jesus from getting up on Resurrection Sunday. We see it. We see it clearly in the text. The Bible says that the women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the mother of James, went to the tomb. I want you to know in the other gospels, there's some other women with them. It's not just Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James. I want you to know Mark's gospel includes Salome was with them. I want you to know that Dr. Luke's gospel said that Joanne was with them. Not only does Dr. Luke say that uh, Joanne was with them, he said other women. So it's, it's more than Mary Magdalene. It's more than Mary, the mother of James. It's more than Salome. It's more than Joanne. There are a host of women who went to Jesus' tomb, looking for his body to anoint him, to looking for his body to, to, to embalm him with the spices so, so, so his body wouldn't smell of decay. They went there looking for his body. They went looking, they went looking. Today, you and I may go looking from time to time, and what might appear to be 
of uh, uh, something blocking our way, we, we I want you to know that we can't quit. I want you to know that you can't quit today. My, Mark and, and Luke and John says that when they showed up, the stone had already been rolled away when they arrived. But here in Matthew's gospel, I like the way Matthew uh, gives us a different account. Matthew says that as the women arrived to the tomb, that, the, that, that suddenly, Somebody said, suddenly there was an earthquake. That's that's what Matthew says. He suddenly there was an earthquake. That, similar to when Jesus died on the cross. The, the earth shook. The earth shook. And, and and the graves were open. And the dead rose from the, the dead. The, the dead, the earth gave up its dead. And, and, and the temple split. And the veil in the temple split from the ceiling to the floor. I say the veil in the temple split from the ceiling to the floor so that we can have access to our God, so that we can have access to the Holy of Holies. I want you to know that something took place when Jesus died. I want you to know that something took place when these women went to the to the tomb. The, the Bible says that the earth shook, the earth shook, and the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled aside the stone and sat on it. The gods shook with fear and they fainted. I said they fainted, but the angel reassured the women, said, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid that what you're looking for in this tomb, you're looking for Jesus. I know why you came, but you're looking for Jesus, that what you're looking for was there in the tomb, but he is risen from the dead. And just as he said he would, he has risen from the dead, just as he said he would. And then the angel says, come, come see, come see for yourself where his body was lying. God told me to tell you today that he intervenes on your behalf, that there will be some stones in your life, but there will be no stone too large to prevent you from seeing the goodness of the Lord. You will see the goodness of the, of the Lord in the land of the living today because of this text. God says that there's no stone too large that you'll see, you'll see, you'll see the goodness of the Lord in the lands of the living. That's our very point, very first point. You're going to see the stone was removed, not because it hindered Jesus from getting up, because it was for our benefit that the stone was removed. The earth shook and the angels sat on the stone. Some of your stones will seem to be too large. They'll seem to be insurmountable. But the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and the angel will bless you in the same way. The angels have, don't you know that you got some angels looking over you? The Bible says that the, the angel said, come see, come, come see, come, come see. The stone was removed so that we could see. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see that Jesus got up. It was so we could see. Thank you, God, for increasing our faith so we'll continue to see no matter what happens in our lives, no matter what you're facing today, God has some angels watching over you. I want you to know that God has some angels watching over you. I don't care whether you're going through sickness that seems like it may result in death. You've got some angels watching over you. No matter how large the storm may seem that you're facing today, God will remove it so you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So that you'll see God's hand in your life. So that you'll see that God is continuing to guide you through life's journey, through life's greatest challenges. If we, if you've never had a problem, let me just say it. I've heard it said that if we never had problems, if you never had a problem, you wouldn't know that God could solve them. Thank you for the great things that you're preparing us for, even though we can't always see them. And, and, and so help us to give, help to give us our best, help us to give our very best, knowing that you're there with us, knowing that you are our strength, knowing that you're preparing us for great things. You're preparing us for great things, knowing that you will always prevail, knowing that our God won't allow us to ignore the most important aspects of justice, mercy, and faith, knowing that the truth crushed down to the earth will rise again just as our Lord and Savior rose on this Resurrection Sunday. No stone can stop us today. We can't quit. We won't quit. We won't give in. We won't give up. We can't quit now. The stone was removed so that you could see God's goodness while you're yet alive in the land of the living. Yet alive in the land of the living. Nothing can stop you. You're all the way up because we believe we're, we're all the way up because we believe, we believe, we believe. The stone was removed. It was removed so that we could go in. That's our next point. The angel said, come see. 
Come means they had to move from where they were into the tomb so that they could see. It was removed so that we could come into our blessings. We can come into our blessings like the woman of Jesus' tomb. The woman of Jesus' tomb. Life will try to block you from what seems to be some in, through some insurmountable situations, some insurmountable stones. Life will try to throw all kinds of stuff at you. You're going to have some stones in your way. But our God always provides a way out. Our God always provides a way over. Our God always provides a way through. Our God always provides a way into our blessing. All you got to do is look back over your life and think things over. All you got to do is turn, just turn it around and think about all that God has done in your life. Think about the times when you didn't think you were going to make it. Think about the times when it looks like you may have been facing a jail cell. Think about the times when it looks like you might have been strung out. Think about the times when it looks like you were going to be facing eviction and, and, and bankruptcy. Think about the time when you were suffering in your relationship. Think about how God turned it all around. Think about that accident you had and how God saved you from it. How God turned it around. Think about all of these things. And know that God, nothing will stop you from being blessed by God. Nothing will stop you from seeing the blessings of the Lord and coming into the blessings of the Lord. Nothing will stop you from fulfilling God's purpose in your life. Nothing will stop you. Not only will we be able to see what God is sharing with us, but we'll be able to walk into our blessings knowing that God has removed every impediment, removed every stone that would attempt to block us. We may have some questions. But God provides answers. We may have some doubts, but God removes all doubts. We may stumble from time to time, but God will steady us. My word says he'll be a rod and a staff for you in what appears to be death. As you go through the valley of the shadow of death, God will brace you on one side and protect you on another. Rod and a staff for you so that you can live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We may have some fears, but God reassures us. We may stumble, but God steadies us. We, we'll be able to keep moving forward, walking into our blessings, never quitting. We can't quit now. We can't quit. Talk to me, Marvin Sapp. You're just a prayer away. We believe what you told me. I believe your word is true. I believe in your promises. Yes, we believe. We, we believe that you'll always come through. Uh, I believe in, we believe in, you believe in, we believe. Doesn't anybody in here know? And does anybody in here believe in God today? We believe, we believe. We believe God will turn your questions and doubts into blessings for you to walk into. God will guide you and God will guide your feet. The Bible says that God orders our steps. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. And we believe that God has removed the stone. For the women at Jesus' tomb, just as Matthew records, that the earth shook and the stone was removed. And, 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 and God will shake some things up in your life in the midst of your challenges. Sometimes you're going to be going through some things. Sometimes you're going to be facing some stones of life. But God will shake up the world for you. God will shake some things up for you. And, and that stone will be removed. You're going to go through some things. You're going to have some doubts. You're going to have some fears. You're going to have some questions. You're going to be wibbly wobbly from time to time. But God has promised to protect you. God has promised to be with you always until the, even until the ends of the earth. God will be with you in the midst of your stone situation. Don't you know that the same God that shook the earth for these women will shake things up for you? Don't you know that there's nothing too hard for our God? And, and look, and look, I see the angel of the Lord sitting on the stones of your life, sitting on the stones in your life, letting you know that it'll be just as God said, that his word is true, that his promises are true, that, that there's no God like our God. No matter what may come into our lives, our God will provide us a way into blessings upon blessings, upon blessings, upon blessings. We, we believe, come on, say it with me. Say it with me. We believe, we, be, we believe, we believe. And lastly, we believe because the stone didn't hinder Jesus and it won't hinder you. We believe because the stone didn't hinder Jesus from getting up and it won't hinder you from getting up. 
Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah, somebody. The Bible says that it was a large stone that covered Jesus' tomb. It was a large stone. Matthew's gospel says that it was sealed with guards posted to keep it from being moved. Let me explain that to you. It had seals on it. It had Caesar's seal on it, which meant that removing it was punishable by death. It was punishable by death. Now, Caesar at the time was, was, was God on to the known world with a little g. He was, he was, he was viewed by the Rome, uh, Romans as God, God in the flesh. Uh, and, and his seal meant something. He, he was the world known as the leader of the world at the time. He, 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 he was the dominant government, just like uh, today the United States is viewed as the world power. That's what that's what Rome was during Jesus' time. And, and that seal that, 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 that Caesar, that Pontius Pilate had put upon the stone meant something. It meant something. I said it meant something. It meant, to, it meant that it was punishable by death to remove it. Anybody who moved it would be crucified. And, and Caesar was the god of the known world. And it said that Rome had over 125,000 troops. And, and at that time, when they were uh, and when Jesus was lived, they had another hundred and twenty-five thousand uh, 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 ancillary troops. So, so they had a quarter million troops during Jesus' time. And, and in Jerusalem, there was a, a legion. Legion ten was in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus' death. That, that's who they had, had guarding the tomb. So, in addition to the stone, the heavy stone being there, there was Caesar's seal all over it. It was tied and bounded with Caesar's seal, and anyone who broke Caesar's seal would, would, would be facing death. And not only that, the Bible says the soldiers were there. A part of the tenth legion uh, of Rome's army, they were there. They numbered some three to five thousand in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus' death. They were there. They had several guards posted to keep it from being moved, keep the stone from being moved. Uh, it had Caesar seal on it. It, it. it was a heavy stone. It, it was a large stone. It had it had guards standing there. It, it was too heavy. It was too large. Not only was it large, not only was it heavy. It had the power of the Roman government in the seal and, and had those armed guards there securing it as well. Yet, the Bible is clear that when the women showed up, Jesus wasn't there. <laughs> the Bible is clear that the stone didn't hinder Jesus. It didn't hinder Jesus from getting up from the grave. Both, both John and Luke simply said that it had been rolled away as the women went to the tomb. The fact remains that Jesus wasn't in the tomb when they arrived. The stone didn't hinder Jesus from rising from the dead. The stone didn't hinder Jesus from leaving death and the grave behind. On this Resurrection Sunday, we believe. I said on this Resurrection Sunday, we believe. We believe that the stone didn't hinder Jesus, and we believe that we can't let the stones of our lives hinder us. We can't quit now. We can't let the stones of life hinder us. We believe that the stones of house rules and Tennessee won't hinder us from true democracy. We believe that the stones and the house decorum of the of the of the federal legislature won't hinder us. Even at the federal uh, 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 executive branch, nothing will hinder us. Nothing will keep us from keep us down. Nothing will keep us from realizing the blessings of God. Nothing will hinder us. Not even the Supreme Court. We we see this week that Clarence Thomas is is guilty. We see that he's he's taking some 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 trips some that's worth millions of dollars, millions of dollars, and, and he proclaims that he doesn't have to declare it. It's out there. It's already been declared. You you a liar and you a cheat. The Supreme Court won't hinder us from from realizing the promises of God. The Supreme Court, the legislature, legislator, or the executive branch won't hinder us. The government won't hinder us. No stone is too large for God to remove. The angel of the Lord moved it out of the way. The angel of the Lord will move the stones of your life out of the way. We believe that, that no matter what comes, no matter what goes, we believe that God helps us to get up from what appears to be certain death. We believe that even death has a surrender to the God we serve. My Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. That means that death has to confess. 
that has to bow before Jesus. That's, that's why he died on the cross for you and me. Come on now. We believe. We believe. We believe. He died on the cross for you and me. Death had to surrender to him. The grave had to surrender to him. I said the grave had to surrender to him. Ah, sin had to surrender. Oh, everything that we know that would hold us back, every stone in our life, had to surrender to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It didn't hinder him from getting up. It didn't hinder him from getting up. And it won't hinder you from getting up. It won't hinder you from getting up. And just in case, just in case, just in case you're having any doubts, know that Jesus will real show you just as he did when these women left the tomb. My Bible says as they left the tomb and walked along in both fear and and excitement. They were both afraid and excited that Jesus showed up. Don't you know that when you're going through the storms and the stones of your life, that Jesus will show up? The Bible says that Jesus showed up. He showed up. He showed up. He showed up. And, and, and the Bible says that he greeted them. He greeted them. He greeted them. He greeted them. And, and, and it says it this way. It, it, it says it this way in, in Luke's gospel. He said, rejoice. Rejoice is what he said. He said, rejoice, rejoice. And, and, they, and they ran to him and they, and they grasped his feet and worshiped him. They worshiped him. They worshiped him. And he gave them this message. Don't be afraid. Don't quit now. Hallelujah. You can't quit now. We won't quit now. Our God is God. He's the living God. Uh, Jesus is is our Lord and Savior. He got up from the grave so that we wouldn't quit. There's no stone too great for our Lord and Savior, Jesus. I don't care what you're going through today. Nothing is too great for our God. There's nothing too hard for our God. There's no stone too heavy for our God. Jesus has overcome the world, and so will you. We believe that Jesus went to that old rugged cross and was crucified for you and for me. We believe that they nailed his hands and his feet to the cross. And, and as they nailed his hands and feet to the cross, they nailed our sins with them. Our, our, sins, our sins were nailed there to him with them. We believe that he, he would not come down from the cross to save himself, but he stayed there to save us. We believe that Jesus died so that our sins would die with them, not to be remembered as far as the east is from the west. We believe that our sins died with Jesus. We believe that he stayed there in that grave all night Friday. We believe he stayed in that grave all day Saturday. We believe that he stayed in that grave all night Saturday. We believe that Jesus got up early on this morning, on this resurrection Sunday. We believe and be believed. And because Jesus got up, we believe that we have the victory today. So nothing too hard for our God. No stone too great. No government seal that'll keep us from being blessed. Nothing will stop us from seeing the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. Nothing will stop us from coming into God's blessing for our life. Nothing will stop us from being all that God has called us to be. God formed you in your mother's womb. And even before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. I said he knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb. He knew you before the formations of the earth, the Bible says. I, I believe, I believe, we believe today that there's nothing too hard for our God. No stone too big. No stone too heavy. No seal too great. Nothing can stop us. No soldier, no army will stop us from seeing the goodness of the Lord, from coming into the blessings. Nothing will stop us or hinder us from being all that God has called us to be. On this Resurrection Sunday, we need to know. We need to be assured. We need to have confidence. We need to rejoice. We can't quit now. We believe in the goodness of the Lord. We believe that we'll see it while we're here in the land of the living. We believe that Jesus got up so that we would get up. We believe that he died so that we would have the victory of reconciliation and restoration and right relationship with God. So I thank you for showing us that nothing can stop us, that we're all the way up. And no stone is too great for you. No stone in our lives is too great for you. We believe because you're the living God. To God be the glory for the great things that God has done. And we thank God for showing us in his word that nothing can stop us. Nothing can hinder us. Nothing will keep us from being all that God has called us to be this day. The doors of the church are open. We know that the best is yet to come. 
The doors of the church are open. No stone can keep you this day from getting, giving your life to Christ. No stone can keep you this day from seeing that Jesus got up from the grave. No stone can keep you this day or will hinder you from God's blessings this day of eternal life. And not just eternal life, goodness here in the land of the living, abundant life. No stone is too great today for you to give your life to Christ. And it starts with relationship. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, living God for you, for me. That no stone will be so great in your life that this living God won't deliver you from it. Won't, won't move the stone out of your way. Won't help you to see your way around and through and over the stones of life. Come on today. Give your life to Christ. Give your hand to this preacher, but give your life to the living God that we serve. Come on today. Join the church. Come on today. Rededicate your faith. There's no finer time than here on this Resurrection Sunday to believe, to, to, to be converted, to, to join the church and to, to rededicate your faith. No, fine. I promise you your life will never be the same. I promise you. I promise you that you'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye. I promise you that although you will have some stones in life, God will help see you through them. Come on now, join the church. You can you can go to the comment section and, and, and put in there, I I, I believe and, and I want to believe along with others so that we can believe together. You can go to our website and click on the join, uh, contact us button and fill out the information. Look, I will call you personally. I'll pray with you. I'll pray the prayer of salvation. I'll, I'll pray with you as you rededicate your faith. I'll pray with you as you join the church. Come on down. Today is your day. Now is your time. You, you can't quit now. You can't quit now. Come on, believe. Believe that God removed the stone for you today so that you can be saved, so that you can join the church, so that you can rededicate your faith. Come on now. Come on now to Christ so that you can take the right hand of fellowship that's extended to you. Come on now to Christ and know that, that you're going to be freed up. You're going to be set free for who the Son sets free is free indeed. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this Resurrection Sunday. We thank you for the victory of the cross. We thank you from of the victory of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. We thank you, God, our Father, for blessing us to see it today. Thank you, God, that nothing's too hard for you. Nothing, nothing's too hard. No seal too great, no, 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 no soldier, no army too great. God, you are the living God, and we trust you, and we believe, God, we believe, we believe. We thank you, God, that those who are coming to you right now, those who are being converted, those who are confessing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we thank you for those who are joining your church. We thank you for those who are rededicating their faith. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for victory this day. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you and we seal this prayer in the name of Jesus, trusting and believing in you. We can't quit now. We won't quit now. We'll be all the way up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Well, saints, I pray that this word touch your ears, touch your hearts. And even if you are saved already, I pray that you know that there's no stone too great in your life that God can't solve. There's no problem too hard for God. There's no stone too heavy, no stone too large for God to remove. That you've got some angels watching over you. And, and, and God will send his angels to, to remove, help, help you through the stones of life. God will help you around the stones of life and God will help you over the stones, nothing too high that you can't get over because of our God. Nothing too low that you can't go under for our God. Nothing too big that you can't go around or through because of our God. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. To God be the glory for the great things that God has done on this Resurrection Sunday. Let us have our final word of prayer, our benediction. Let me declare this prayer over you. And then you will have the rest of your Sunday to your yourself. It, it's past the noon hour and, and brunch is waiting on somebody. Come on now. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling flat on your face and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Be all power that the only wise God, our savior, be all power, all glory, dominion and power 
both now and forever and forever and forever and forever in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Go in peace and enjoy the rest of your day. Amen. Sister Sonia, you can stop that recording. Hit that. <laughs>